Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be talking about the Zero, the world's very first holeless cell phone. You're thinking to yourself, holeless, what does that mean? Well, it means there's absolutely no connections, no outputs, no inputs, absolutely nothing on the Zero. And this is made by a company, I'm not sure if it's Mizu or Maizu, it's something like that. This is their very first product. Now, before we jump in and talk about this product though, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, F-Secure. Let's just face it. Nowadays, in order to be private, untraceable, and anonymous online, you need a VPN. And the VPN I recommend is F-Secure's Freedom VPN. When you turn on Freedom, whoever your internet provider is, they can't see what you're doing. And the sites you visit, they won't know your real location either, giving you total freedom while surfing the net. One very important factor when you want to pick a VPN is that you want to be able to trust that company completely running it. Freedom is brought to you by F-Secure, a company that has a 30-year spotless track record of protecting its customer security and their privacy. And best of all, Freedom VPN is exceptionally easy to use and set up. You'll be surfing the web anonymously in no time. So if you'd like to check out Freedom for absolutely free, see the link below where you can try it for five days without paying a dime. All right, so if you're looking for a VPN, check this one out for five days. If you like it, you're in. If you don't, hey, it's free. Now with that said, this phone coming to market to zero is $1,299. I mean, what do these guys think they're selling? A 2080 Ti Founders Edition? I mean, come on. This phone is really expensive. Now, before I tell you why me personally, I would never really be interested in anything like that. Let me just talk to you guys about some of the specs and why I guess they feel that this advanced technology is worth 1300 of your hard earned dollars. All right, so check this. In place of mechanical buttons, you know, the power and volume buttons, this phone uses virtual side buttons. And these are activated by pressure sensing technology with haptic feedback. So what that basically means is that instead of having your normal buttons, the buttons are just gonna be underneath and they're gonna be pressure sensitive because really aren't all buttons kind of pressure sensitive? You push on them and the pressure makes it do it. I don't know if that's really new or not, but they're claiming it's the newest and greatest thing. Let's move on. Also, instead of a USB port for charging, the Zero uses Meizu's own Super M Charge wireless technology to fast charge at an output of 18 watts. Now on this particular technology, Zero says that they are the very first people to make this technological breakthrough. Is it true? It's possible. Let's see some other features. Now check this. For data transfer, there's a wireless chip and this is used for the wireless USB. And this is capable of transferring data over the air at speeds as fast as a USB 3.0 port. Okay, so my first question is this. USB 3.0 speeds over the air. Do you guys know of any service out there by Frontier, Spectrum, any of you guys in other countries that know of any provider service that provides over the air speeds that go that fast for wireless? I don't. So unless the world is really going to become a Bluetooth where instead of having wireless in your house, your whole house become Bluetooth, I don't really see how that's really going to pan out. I mean, it sounds great on paper, USB 3.0 transfer speeds, but over the internet, hmm, won't your internet provider actually have to be providing you with speeds to match that to get those speeds? If you happen to follow our channel and saw our videos of CES 2019, we showed you guys a TV that had a speaker built into the TV. No speakers, it was actually built into the screen. Zero is replacing the traditional speaker grills and earpieces and are using an in-screen audio technology that uses the screen as a transceiver, much like the Paizo Electronic Tech inside the original Zomi Mi Mix. Now this piece of technology is two ways to me. I think it is really, really incredible that they're putting this technology in a phone. I think it's really nice, but here is the other side of that. From what I've been reading, if anything goes wrong, you're gonna have really high repair cost on this, and how strong is a screen gonna be that has the speakers already built into it? To me, it seems like a really cool thing, you know, like on paper and like the idea, but how well it's going to be executed and how, you know, how safe is the phone gonna be? 
you know, I really don't know. Hopefully we won't see the, like Unbox Therapy doing some bend gate crap with it again and bending the phone in half and breaking it, but who knows? Those guys thrive on that stuff. So, you know, I think that's a cool technology, but it also lends to the phone, I think, having too much technology in one thing. I mean, having a screen, that's one thing. Having speakers is speakers, and it's cool to have the speakers and the screen all in one, but doing repairs is gonna cost a fortune. So instead of having a standard SIM card, the Zero uses digital eSIMs and has an in-display fingerprint reader as well. It features a clean unibody ceramic design and is IP68 waterproof. So I admit that the Zero does kind of sound good on paper, but it's $1,300. And right now they're having like a campaign, um, I guess trying to get up enough money to make it. I think they're actually right, right around like $23,000. They're trying to get $100,000. <sighs> Me personally, I would never buy this. I know there's some people out there who they want to have the bleeding edge technology. So they'll buy anything that's like that. But for me, I'm always probably gonna buy last generation phones because for me, that's just where the price point break is and I prefer it. Um, the screen, having the speakers into it, that's a cool idea. There's actually no ports on it whatsoever. So unless you have technology that matches this, you have a matching wireless set of headphones and this, that, or the other, which not everybody does. But I suppose that the people out there who are gonna be paying $1,300 for a cell phone probably have money for all that crap. And that's what they're thinking, you know? And maybe that's logic will actually pan out in the very end. I wanna know what you guys think. Do you guys think that the technology that we've shown you is actually worth it? for $1,300 for a phone? Because I'm gonna tell you, for me personally, I am never paying that much money for a phone unless I can take that phone, take it home, and stick it into some kind of device and make it my home PC as well. I mean, that's just how it is for me. I mean, buying something like that and paying as much as a video card that's like, we all know is completely crazily priced already. Like nobody can hardly afford an RTX 28 Ti. That's a really expensive card. The Founders Edition, come on, man. Only people who really can afford those are the rich people and lucky people like me who are reviewers who, who got to have them in our hands to review. I'll admit that I'm very lucky to have it. You know what I mean? And so for me, paying $1,300 just for a phone that in some ways is cool, but other ways kind of cuts me off at the knees. It really does. You know, it doesn't have normal technology in it. I'm just really wondering how this, you know, transfer rates of USB 3.0 over wireless is going to work. I mean, those, I guess those questions will be addressed and answered when we see the product hit the market, if it hits the market, because right now it's a Kickstarter and it's, it's like not even a quarter of its intended goal of the money. So if they don't hit their goal of the money, this product will never see the light. Um, me personally, I wouldn't put any money to this Kickstarter, but that's my opinion. We'll have a link down below. I wasn't paid anything for this video. We just saw the story this morning and I was like, 1300 bucks for a fracking cell phone? Seriously? Like, what, is, what does it do? Rub my back? Made of gold? Um, am I going to be able to like sell it for food? I mean, you know what I mean? I'm just wondering like, you know, how it justifies this price because cell phones are already like, I think, at an outrageous price. Eight nine hundred dollars for a cell phone? They're not worth that much. Just like a RTX 2080 Ti isn't worth that much money. It just seems like everybody's just charging a shit ton of money these days just to say, oh, hey, we can. And it's ruining the market, I feel. I honestly feel there's a lot of things that are going on in the market, which we're gonna be addressing more here on Tech of Tomorrow. You're gonna see a lot of changes this year. Um, I'm gonna be focusing on people's bullshit. I'm just gonna let you know that right now. I've always tried to be the nice guy and bring the, the you know the, the, the goodness to the table, but you know what? Nope, people don't seem to like it. And to be honest with you, I'm tired of playing the game. So for now, probably the videos you're gonna be seeing are gonna be pretty uh, right down to the point. And unless the product is something absolutely amazing, and uh, if I'm telling you it's amazing, that is because this guy believes it's amazing. Not that I've been paid money, because I'll tell you right now, I've never been paid a cent ever in my life to say something good about somebody's product. Ad sponsors have tried it. They've tried to make me say, oh, this is my favorite game, this is this, I don't do it. And I would never pay, like I said, $1,300 for a cell phone that I can only use as a cell phone. To me, it's just not worth it. But hey, opinions vary. Let me hear what you guys gotta say. Peace.